Champ Man, second chance, man. This run is fantastic. Nick Spencer hit it out of the park. Yep. I'm also a big fan of the covers, too. Oh, the covers of the of one through four have been wonderful. But the variants, we haven't even touched on variants of this run. It doesn't nope. always happen like this where the variants are just as good. I would say some of these variants are better. I would agree. Let's go through them. First one. First one is the Pearson variant. Oh, this is one of my favorites. This is like a, it's Scott Lang shrinking. He's, sm- he's already shrunk. He's small on like the bad guy. Right? Is that, that's the one with the, the mask. He's pulling yeah. like a ski mask off that guy's face. Yeah. It's yeah. Like a close-up shot. He's already small fighting crime. How, it's do, you awesome. fight, how do you fight that? Like I a little guy on, on you? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like a little bee. Like you ever have like a bee chasing you and you're like, what the hell is going on? It's because he's Punching so you? Yeah, imagine if he had like this super strength. And I also like the movie variant. It's like a rendition of number one, but with a Paul Rudd version of Ant-Man. Yeah, that was a cool poster anyway. That's a good cover to use. Now the Phil Noto variant of number two. This is one of my favorite variants. That one was, it just looked classy, run. man. That like that blur effect. Right. Iron Man in the background is kind of blurry. It had a, a little bit of a depth thing going on, which... You don't see a lot of artists doing that's Yeah, and it also has like the like a different style of writing on the cover. And you have Hank Pym. Right, and Wasp. Very cool. Classy. Now, the Darrow variant of number two. Whole, this is probably my favorite variant of the whole lot. Damn. I was hoping you weren't going to say that because that one was my favorite too. The with, Praying Mantis? Yeah, with like the Robo Mantis. It reminds me of like a Fiona Staple style a little bit. Yeah. I, I kind of gave my hopes up. But then I realized Daryl's got some amazing variants himself. And we have this praying mantis with a hydra symbol on the eye. Yeah. Ant-Man mid-fight. There was no praying mantis right? yeah, that in wasn't, this series. That would be a very misleading cover if I picked that up. But it's still really cool. It's so cool. Then we have the Katie Cook variant. This is also, this is probably my second favorite. Yeah, movie. that's true. It stands out. The ant farm. What a good idea. It's cool. It's like a little kid drew a little bit of it too. Like you have a, a ant man that's really small, very basic looking, but it's literally an ant farm on the cover. Thought it was Scotty Young at first. I did too. That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah, yeah. I definitely thought it was Scotty Young and it wasn't. It's Katie Cook and she knocked it out of the park so with this good. variant. It's awesome. And these variants, by the way, are super low print. I couldn't find many of these on eBay. Hmm. We move on to the Chang variant. Cliff Chang. Oh my God. This guy is amazing. I've got a little bit of a soft spot for him since uh, since I discovered him on uh, New 52 Wonder Woman. He was the artist for that. It's if so you were good. to describe his art style in one word, what would you say? <sighs> Clean. Right? Clean, I think, is the word I think of. Yeah, it's just the line work. Nice comic book looking black lines that he uses. What's your favorite Wonder Woman issue of that run, like as far as covers go? Oh, man. The one with all the uh, the statues on the front. Ooh. I think it was 27. I believe it's 27. Wonder Woman, I know what you're talking about. There's like blood splatter on a yellow that cover. yellow background, yeah. Heck yeah. It's gorgeous. Clean yeah. is a good word to describe it. And then we have issue number four, Dave Raposa. What the duck? Yeah. Howard the Duck isn't even in this N- series. No. But man, is this cover gorgeous. Like an old conquistador or something on the front. Like Yeah. A Spaniard, a couple of Spaniards, and Howard the Duck sitting around a campfire in black and white. Like It's like they just told him, hey, uh, make a Howard the Duck cover, just what the duck, whatever, it doesn't matter. You think it was like how they do, uh, like right now, every cover has a Venom theme? Mm-hmm. Like I a think Howard the Duck was getting rebooted back then, and now <laughs> they just put Howard the Duck as a variant for mm. every comic. 2015, wasn't Guardians of the Galaxy around that time? Yeah, first movie was 14. There you go. So, I mean, it was definitely some some ramp up of that character around that time. So it's fitting. And man, I'm glad that this cover was made. And that was actually the only variant cover of number four. Yeah. Yeah. So it's some great variants. Super scarce, but they're affordable and they're out there. So keep an eye out. We had a comment from our last Ant-Man coverage. Ant-Man, Second Chance Man, issue number three. What did someone say? It's from Ion Shivs. Ion, thank you so much for leaving a comment. We do appreciate it. When I went to Mark Brooks' booth at Fan Expo a couple years ago, he had the original art for that Ant-Man Taskmaster cover for sale. Yes, that Taskmaster shot is brilliant. My favorite cover from this run that's not a variant thus far. Me too, until we got to issue four, and that's my favorite now. That's my new favorite. I want to know of all the variants we just showed, which one is your favorite? The audience, put your answer in the comment section below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe while you're down there too. We move on to issue number four, Ant-Man, Second Chance Man, Ryan's favorite cover, Miami Vice. Because they're in Miami. It makes sense. It does. 
So this story is split into two parts. So you've got the first part is the antagonists. Second part, protagonists. True. All right. Antagonists. We've got Augustine Cross, this kind of like shady, mysterious type guy we introduced in the last issue. And he has kidnapped this heart surgeon, Dr. Sondheim, Erica Sondheim, to like, he wants her to operate on his dead dad, who's like stuck in a cryostasis chamber. So he's, he's dead, but not dead. Mm-hmm. He needs a, uh, needs an operation. He needs a new heart. Yeah. And their idea to fix him is quite drastic. He specifically wants to steal the heart out of Scott Lang's daughter, Cassie, because she was exposed to pim particles in her youth, even though she's still a kid. That's right. She actually has those particles in her that w- makes her heart special. It's able to, to grow and shrink. So apparently would meet the needs that this villain needs to survive. Yeah, his, his dad's heart like blew up, grew mm-hmm. and exploded. And that's why uh, Dr. Sondheim had to keep putting hobo hearts into him yeah. because he kept burning through hearts. That's actually a really interesting thing to, men- to mention because this story is essentially a retelling of Marvel premiere 47 and 48. Yeah. But they acknowledge within this story that it's a retelling of those issues, but taking place in 2015. It almost feels kind of like a reboot. It involves all, like all of the same characters mm-hmm. and they're kind of in the same little operating room. It's like the same problem. Yeah. And even the same victim, Cassie Lang. Correct. And this doctor is being forced to perform this operation because her son was also kidnapped. Yeah. So Augustine Cross tells her, like, so you can, you, uh, if you back out of this operation. Two kids would be killed if she doesn't. Yeah. Her son would die as well as Cassie Lang. Ooh, brutal. So what is Scott Lang doing? All the while. He's got to get his kid back. He's, yeah, he's freaking out. Yeah, he's freaking out. He's, he's avoiding calls from his wife. Yeah, you know that's not going to be a good phone call. No, not at all. And he's got no one to help him. He mentions that he has called the Avengers and the Fantastic Four and that they aren't even answering. And he's, he's freaking out that like Tony Stark put him on a blacklist like for the whole billboard incident. Isn't that interesting? Like This is a story where it makes a, a world with so many superheroes and villains and so much crime and then superhero teams to compensate for it believable there are heroes that are just so busy dealing with like multiverse problems yes fantastic four are not going to answer the phone to help somebody whose daughter got kidnapped in miami yeah even if it is scott lang right yeah like they've got you know universes to save right so no one's answering his calls he's got to do this himself fortunately he has some employees that can help him he does he's got uh mr grizzly was helping him out in the last couple issues he's quickly becoming my favorite character in this run agreed and he has to help for one main reason what's that the security system that cross technologies has put in place is insane right it's like built to keep ant-man out microscopic motion sensing lasers it's not good no detect small things sure sonic disruptors that would interfere with my helmet so he couldn't like communicate with ants Mm -hmm pesticide mists you gotta keep the ants out of the building all run by an adaptive ai that gives pim tech a run for its money Ooh, so it's like this is made to keep ant-man out specifically which makes sense because they are kidnapping his daughter and know that he's gonna come right so they need help grizzly can't be the only one to take them down and we learned something really funny as well from grizzly yeah he's uh apparently a member of super villains anonymous which is like a uh, recovery support group for super villains what does it say? At the bottom of the little business card, it says, uh, friendship, atonement, prison avoidance. I mean, this is a world where there's so many villains and recovery is a big part of it. And how do these villains keep coming back? Well, it's because they earn their way out. Apparently, they treat villain activity like an addiction in this world. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you've got your people like your Red Skulls and your, your Norman Osborns who are too far gone to rehabilitate but i'm sure there's some lower tier villains like grizzly and and machine smith yes that's the uh tech guy that uh that they need yeah so they go visit him they go visit machine smith and he is doing something pretty important doing something a little degrading i would say well someone's got to entertain the kids at a birthday party (laughs) this series is very good at showing what what you need to do to survive yeah like it's not all about stopping crime and saving the day. Like someone's got to pay the bills and pay the rent and keep the lights on. Yeah. And even the villains, it's like a lot of these 
positions that they're taking, they're for a job. It's not necessarily to just like rule and be the most villainous person. It's, it's to buy batteries to consume because yeah. Machine Smith, um, he gets recruited by Scott Lang and Grizzly. And the way that they get him to, you know, to join the team is and to talk to them in the first place, they give him some batteries. You know, they buy him some lunch. I guess he's he actually is part machine. He yeah, he is like the living internet. Yeah, he refers to himself as as a living embodiment of the internet to kind of like illustrate his power set. And they ask him, hey, like can you do this? Like I know you're a computer and I know that you could break into a lot of stuff, but could you break into this particular building with this system easy he says tricky 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 yeah all that reference are you kidding me they just put in a big run dmc reference right there in the middle of it freaking nick spencer man he's the man yeah that came out of nowhere i was not expecting that with the glasses Mm -hmm. and the hat and everything oh it's awesome and yeah he's like yeah we can do that but i need a job yeah like he's got a he wants a job he doesn't want to be working kid parties so they, they get their team together and they go and break in. But they don't break in just yet. This is my favorite page of the whole issue here because we have this whole like conversation between Crossfire, the guy who kidnapped Cassie Lang, right. and his girlfriend. Yeah, she's like a... She sounded like an immigrant or something. Like she was spoken broken English, and she's mm-hmm. like a like an alternate cheerleader for the the Cowboys or something like that. Like, yeah, he's dating somebody who's you know a little famous, not really famous, and she's kind of hounding him about yeah. like like what are you doing? Like you're 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 running security for this guy? Like yeah, like it's guy? his nephew. I guess he's Darren Cross's brother, mm-hmm. which means Augustine Cross is his nephew, and his this guy's girlfriend is giving him crap for working for his nephew. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, I used to run this place. I fought Hawkeye. Yeah, like I used to fought. Yeah, like I'm a big time villain. Yeah, you know? and she's like, like well, boop do doo Hawkeye. Like, who you're cares? Just, you're a third rate bullseye. What are you talking about? Your yeah. mom's right. I never should have gotten involved with you in the first place. Does bullseye have a robotic ear? <laughs> like, that's so what he take says. that. Yeah, like, <laughs> like that's gonna really show her. It's great. And then he's like, he runs into Machine Smith. Machine Smith's like, hey, I just disabled all the security. And he's like, well, I should probably do something about this, but there's a guy in a bear suit about to break through this wall yeah just heads up you know that little panel at the bottom right he's just done for he doesn't even react when this giant crazy bear guy smashes through his wall he just he shrinks he's like just puts his head down i used to be somebody (laughs) (laughs) and he didn't he fought hawkeye yeah he used to hawkeye's like a running joke too like he was hawking you know come on um so they have this fighting scene and ant-man's able to break in and as soon as he gets to this layer, yeah, he does manage to sneak in and shrink down and crawl through the vents, and he he manages to creep his way into this operating room. But before he can really kind of get his plan off the ground, uh, he gets squished or stomped on by Darren Cross, who is now resurrected and ready to go. Yes, he got there a little late. Hopefully, Cassie's still alive. I'm assuming they brought him back to do the surgery. We have to get him out. So I think he still has enough time to save his daughter, but we're going to have to wait to find out in Second Chance Man issue number five. Yeah, that's some next issue stuff. We got a little bit of a cliffhanger here because he is now squished between this giant guy's toes. Yes, I am super excited. We're moving on to issue number five. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our videos. We pump out a lot of content. In case you haven't noticed, we, we do. We're active on the internet. Just like Machine Smith. I like to think that Machine Smith, if he had the opportunity... He'd do one thing. He would probably geek responsibly. Enough said. Thanks so much for watching the video. I actually just picked up a brand new collection and oh my gosh, the keys are insane. And I'm gonna debut them on Instagram. So you're gonna wanna check those out because they're all going in the mystery mail call. We are like amping it up. It's fire going out. Geekstreet101.com to sign up.